Next, I would like to invite the Open PLC group under the mentorship of Rajesh sir to proceed with their presentation. Hello and good afternoon everyone. Myself Alankrita and she is my friend Mansa. During these two crucial months of our uh, internship, we have worked on a project called uh, Open Source PLC. Well, uh, as soon as as soon as uh, the word PLC comes to our mind, the very thing which strikes my mind immediately is automation. Now, uh, what is the need for automation? I'm going to show you with a very simple example. We are coming to our room and we are turning on the lights and uh, they are glowing and uh, switching on the fans and uh, it's moving. So. I think uh, it gives us very, uh, it, it's really comfortable for us to feel. But uh, what uh, will you feel if you are asked to turn it on and off after every 30 seconds interval? Will it be good? I don't think so. Actually, we will appreciate it. It will be so irritating. Now, think about the situation if uh, in industries, the experiments like bottle filling and all, these are to be conducted manually. Then it will be so much hectic. I think... Uh, Industries are going to be handicapped without automation nowadays. Next slide, please. What is basically a PLC? A programmable logic controller is a device that automates machinery in factories and workplaces. It's a more generic and robust version of the well-known microcontrollers in use. That is basically what is a PLC. But uh, believe me, before coming here, I just heard about PLC. But uh, I could never think of something called the open source PLC. Now, after working here for two months, I can believe that something as simple and uh, as dynamic as uh, a simple microcontroller based PLC is possible. And depending upon that also, we can uh, implement experiments and uh, large scale experiments like uh, elevator, car parking, everything. So that I could understand after uh, working here for two months only. Otherwise, it would be quite impossible for me to understand that uh, something as simple and as dynamic as an open source PLC based on a simple Atmega 16 microcontroller that we have built is possible. And uh, as you can see here, we have the prototype also. We'll be showing the uh, simple demos also just uh, at the last part of our presentation. So before that, I would uh, like to hand over the mic to my uh, teammate, Mansa, she will uh, explain all the technical details, what are the challenges we have faced and all these things and uh, what are the solutions we came up with. She will elaborate all the things so over to Mansa. Good evening everyone. Um, I hope all of you are interested. Okay, uh, so before going to the technical details, I know that you all are uh, very, very well versed with the idea of open source, right? So. Um, I'd like you to uh, know that there's something called open source hardware also there along with your open source software, which you all heard of, right? So uh, the first question that comes over to you is why would you actually need an open source version for a PLC, right? So um, basically the main concern was these ITI colleges and uh, the polytechnic ones don't basically have this PLC set up. Uh, these PLC setups are really huge and they control um, devices that run on really high voltages like around uh, 230 volts or probably any kind of voltages. Um, so the main problem is, this is actually a subject which is taught, okay. Uh, but they, the students don't really have um, a setup to work on. They really le learn just the theory and nothing else. But um, you would have all uh, heard of this fact that you will always understand better if you do it practically rather than doing it on just a screen or learning it by all by yourself, right? So that was the idea for, in, uh, for an open source hardware implementation for this. Um, okay, uh, so how we went about doing the project was such. Firstly, we had to come up with a controller which uh, supported a lot of IOs. This was because probably if you have a huge setup, you would want um, a lot lot more number of IOs than you would think of. Um, then we had to think about the flashing method, that is putting the hex file onto the core. Um, thinking about that, 
the ISPs that are the in uh, in system programmers. I won't I won't go into the details, but um, I won't bore you off with the technical aspects. But yeah, we used uh, there were a lot many ideas for that, so we had to stick to our, uh, the idea which was the best one and the cheapest one, so that it can be incorporated into uh, a very small budget. And yes, the mechanical setups were a major task involved in this. We had to show the implementation on the real uh, in the real time. All right. Uh, so yeah, the major task was to understand the IC and how we'd be programming it. So you guys are very well versed with the terminals that you use on Linux, right? So we use the same uh, terminal, and there's this thing called AVR Dude. Don't laugh on the uh, name, but this is uh, the thing which is used to uh, flash your uh, AVRs or PIC controllers. So this is our first prototype that we built. Uh, we would proudly call it uh, version 1.0. Okay, you can see those two DB9 connectors there. One is for the UART, and the other one is for programming. Uh, over there, the black thing, the straight one, that's again for programming it faster. Uh, then you can see the IC there, that's Admega 16 AIC. That's max 232 for the UART. And that's the power supply. Okay, uh, so for the software part, uh, we actually came across this um, software called LD Micro, which easily incorporates these ladders, which are used to understand, which is basically one of the logics which is used to uh, program a PLC. It's more or less like the digital logics that you all might have heard of, right? Uh, there are uh, a lot more uh, logics that are incorporated, but LD Micro supports ladder logic, which is easy to understand. So we stuck to that. And the best part in LD Micro is it generates the hex file directly. So you need not do a manual intervention in between. You just compile it and you get a hex file for that. All right, um, so coming to the challenges faced, basically there's a, uh, there's a very little amount of documentation or something very uh, substantial to think about when it comes to programming using this uh, terminal thing that I told you right now, that's called AVR Dude. So we couldn't basically find a lot of um, documentation on that. So we had to spend a lot of time understanding how that IC would respond to that commands written on the terminal. So basically what we wanted was such a screen. All right, you can see those loading things and all that. But what we always got was such a thing, device not responding and all that. So it was very uh, you know, disappointing and uh, hard for us to digest the fact that we did so much work and it's not working, it's not working. But finally when you see that screen which I showed you, you feel really happy that it's working finally. So yeah. Um, Coming to the cost and the feasibility of the project that we, um, the board that we made, we actually designed the whole board uh, using some uh, help also. As in we had to come across all these uh, ISPs also and select the best one, as I told you earlier. So when we calculated the cost, it came out to be exactly, to be precise, it was um, 380 rupees. So I would say less than uh, 400 rupees for that. Uh, that is a uh, much, a uh, larger improvement over a PLC which would cost about uh, 15,000 rupees. So these, uh, uh, these polytechnic colleges which I talked about can easily incorporate such a, a development board. But you would again ask me what's the difference between an Arduino and say this, right? Um, Arduino firstly has lesser IOs. Secondly, um, Arduino is a more of a microcontroller uh, as, uh, aspect of uh, this thing. This thing that we made has relay circuits and uh, other things and, uh, which can be used for these setups which require PLCs. Uh, Arduino can be used, yes, of course, but uh, you would know that an Arduino would cost about 1,500 rupees if I'm not wrong and our whole setup would come in that much. So I guess if you have something which is as good as that, an Arduino basically, and you can buy a setup within that much amount, I think I would be really happy with that, right? So, um, yeah, the one which we made right now has about 12 plus experiments and I told you 1,500 rupees is the cost. So, I guess like if the projects that we've incorporated in this are basically the ones that are uh, really essential and um, required to understand a PLC. So, we've tried to incorporate whatever is there. You have a UART uh, function also. Say you want it, you can incorporate that also.
Next comes LD Micro and its interface. As I already explained, uh, it's a really easy interface. You can really uh, get through it. It's like a cakewalk, basically. It's really easy to understand. And uh, yeah, it helps us also. It generates the hex code, so we needn't worry so much. And yes, um, while we were doing it, uh, we um, went about documenting it really uh, properly. This was because when we were doing it, we found it really difficult to actually understand all the concepts. So we were like, if we are going to give it to someone, we better document it properly. So that it doesn't become a hell lot of trouble for someone else to understand that. Okay. Um, again, the challenges that we faced. As I told you, at Mega 16, no proper pro uh, programming ideas are present online. Then fishing out the best solution, the cheapest one. Then... Um, yeah, incorporating the major functions that are required. Then pro protection circuits. Obviously, protection circuits are really necessary because if you say short of or you invert the terminals, you might end up frying up your controller. You would not want to do that. Then designing the board and the PC. So these were the technical aspects. Uh, then mechanical issues. Yeah, uh, we basically before starting this, we just worked with the motors without those tension tension and that conveyor belt, we found, okay, this is really simple, but that setup itself took days together and trust me, we took two days to figure out what is going wrong and what's not right. So yes, mechanical issues are always there. And yes, technical issues, obviously, um, we had to do this thing called fuse setting, uh, which requires, which is actually done to change the way a controller behaves. So if you do something wrong in that, you might end up losing your controller. It will never respond until and unless you provide such a thing. So we ended up uh, losing three of our uh, lovely controllers in that way. And uh, yeah, these are the uh, these are the the photos of the setups that we did. And we would want to proceed with the demo. Thank you all. Um, yeah, we'll show, we'll proceed with the demo. It's making some noise. I'm sorry for that, but uh, let it be. I hope it works. Okay. So um, this is our um, setup for an elevator system. All right. So um, I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's something like this over here which would move. Okay. So I hope it works. So if I press this button, you can see this is like a person standing outside the lift. All right. And these black tiny things that you can see are called limit switches. Now, I pressed from outside that I want to uh, want the lift to come here. So the lift came here. Now, say I press, from, I get inside the lift, I press this G. You can see this G? So I press this, it will go back to ground floor. Um, if you would have come across this, oh God, one second, something wrong with the setup. This always happens when we are doing some demo, right? It would it would never work when there's a demo. Uh, all right, it worked. Okay, uh, this always happens. Everything will work perfectly fine. But the time of demo, that thing has to make noise. Everything has not got to work. All right, it's okay. I just wanted to give you a brief idea about it. Okay. So now, say I press this. I hope it works. All right. Say I press two. Yes. Okay. So this was a small uh, demo about the elevator system. So we have another uh, setup, which is basically um, a control loop. Okay. Uh, basically, there's a bulb. Uh, you guys want to see it? Cool. Um, uh, would you guys mind waiting for two minutes? Like we need to just remove these setups and then do the wiring and all. Uh, so there's this bulb which heats up. There's a thermistor attached to it. Uh, I need to flash it, but okay. uh, I will flash it with a program which basically starts the fan once there's a temperature uh, rise. It will maintain it within some temperature range. Okay, So wait for a second. Or you guys are okay with the video which I took earlier? Okay, wait. Video is fine? Okay, uh, so you can see that bulb right there. There's this small black thing over there. That's the thermistor. So the bulb has turned on. Now it turned off. The fan has turned on. 
yes i'll i'll do that in a while yes so basically what we are trying to do is um uh you guys might not have come across this but it is something like a self sustaining system basically what we are doing is this bulb heats up there's a thermistor a thermistor is like a resistor which changes its value over the rise in temperature or a fall so basically a thermistor is used to detect the variation in the temperature once the threshold is reached we would uh, once the uh, once the threshold is reached we would uh, want the bulb to turn off and the fan to turn on so that we maintain the temperature at the same level so this is something which is uh, a self sustaining system obviously you don't need a person to stand there and touch it or something it's a self automated system which you would probably see when you're working with plcs the other setups uh, that we had done was a um, a simple rg uh, i mean this traffic light thing it's a simple thing but yes i mean to understand the concept even such a small thing has the concept of counters and timers in it so it helps you to understand the basics um this is a car parking system that we have so basically when a car comes across the the rail the shaft gets up and then in some time it comes down this is done using a stepper motor um uh so basically we did that uh, you can have the concept of limit switches and uh, you know automation in that again after this is done yeah i guess uh, we are done with that um yes this is the same lift thing that you saw so i press 2 it will go to uh, floor 2 now if i give a manual in input over there it comes to that floor then you go inside you press any button yeah ground it goes down press you request it to come it comes to the second floor and uh, you won't believe the ladder for this was around uh, 20 rungs which was the maximum size of our code in this the whole setup the maximum amount of code was for this so yes i mean you can uh, extend it to any other idea which you want that's why we had 12 plus experiments you can do it for two floors you can do it for one floor you can do it for a conveyor system also So we have all those things incorporated in that. So I'd like to end it by uh, thanking uh, first uh, Kanan sir and Kosla sir, firstly for giving us the idea and the path to go across the project in itself. Then we would like to thank Rajesh sir for helping us, especially with the mechanical setup and all the other uh, requirements. Then I'd like to thank my mentors uh, Nivedita ma'am and Akshay sir for constantly supporting us and helping us out with the project. Thank you so much.